a warm welcome to the Institute for Advanced Study and to this uh, conference celebrating the work and impact of Jean Bougain. Uh, my name is Robert Dijkraaf. I'm the director and Leon Levy professor here. And it's uh, absolutely heartwarming to see you all here for uh, this uh, amazing conference. A conference celebrating Jean. And of course, uh, we are all uh, very much aware he isn't with us at this moment physically, but I'm happy to report uh, Jean is online and looking at us on you and what's happening uh, uh, as a big brother uh, watching us and, uh, and uh, in his home in Belgium. Uh, I said it's heartwarming to, and I'm sure also to Jean, to see this audience uh, full of uh, friends, colleagues, students, mentors, and fans. So I think we're kind of all cheering him on and cheering on his, uh, his work. Um, and in particular, I think I uh, want to thank uh, those of you who will speak, those of you who have been part of uh, the organizing committee, in particular, Gigiola Stavani, and uh, who chaired the uh, organizing committee. You will say a few words later. Uh, thank you for all your work. Uh, and also uh, Peter Sarnak, uh, professor, of course, here in the School of Mathematics. Uh, and the staff of IES who provided us so much guidance and, 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 and support in organizing this meeting. Uh, I think, personally, I feel it wonderful that we're having this meeting here at the Institute, which, of course, is so much the home, uh, physically and intellectually, of John. Um, my role, actually, is to uh, make some kind of uh, boring uh, definitions before we get to the exciting theorems. Of course, we are celebrating uh, the exceptional range and depth and power, I would say superhuman power, of Jean in, in his uh, mathematical work. And I think he is in many ways a counterexample to many theorems. One theorem is that mathematicians of that kind are no longer made. Um, and you can take your own favorite uh, historical figures to compare him to. Uh, as far as the definitions are concerned, um, I have to say a few things about also his career and his recognition, although one of the most lovely remarks I heard when I came into the institute, at some point we were discussing somebody and one of the institute professors said, well, the great thing of being at IES is that I no longer have to wear my medals. Uh, so, but I will go over a few of these medals. Um, of course, uh, as you know, uh, Jean um, was born in Belgium, in Ostend, and uh, he uh, became a professor here at the Institute in 1994, the same year he got his Fields Medal. Now, you know that uh, Bel I'm from the Netherlands, and Belgium and Netherlands have a very friendly relation. But sometimes, like if there's a soccer match, it gets like, kind of intense. And of course, um, uh, it's very difficult to admit for the Dutch that there were zero Dutch Fields Medalists. Well, there are two from Belgium, Pierre de Ligne and Jean Bourguin, both here at the Institute. So. That soccer match is 2-0 uh, in a very uh, explicit way. Uh, Jean was uh, awarded a Belgian Research Fellowship in 1975, and he studied for his doctorate at the Free University of Brussels, and awarded his PhD in 1977. I'm very happy that his uh, thesis advisor, Professor Freddy Delbaan, is here with us. He continued his studies for his habilitation at the Free University and was awarded this habilitation in 1979, and then received the first of many, many, many prizes, the Alumni Prize from the Belgium NSF. When his research fellowship ended in 81, he was appointed professor at the Free University of Be Brussels, and he held his appointment until 1985, receiving great honor for his research work. He was awarded the Empin Prize by the Belgium NSF and in 83, and the same year also reaped the Salon Prize. In 85, he was awarded the highest science honor of Belgium, the De Leo Damri Boulard Prize. Then in 85, he left Belgium and went, uh, accepted two appointments as the JL Du Professor of Mathematics at the University of Illinois in the United States, and of course also as professor at our sister institution, the Institut des Hautes Etudes Scientifiques at Bursuivet. The French Academy of Sciences awarded uh, Jean also a series of prizes, the Langevin Prize in 85, and its highest award, the Elie Cartan Prize in 1990. Uh, and all these prizes, um, mention is made of his incredible power as a problem solver, uh, making outstanding contributions across a range of topics, particularly in analysis. Uh, as a recipient of the Fields Medal and the Shaw Prize, among numerous other awards, he has an extraordinary ability to bring new perspective, I think we can all attest to, long-standing questions in areas of mathematics, 
And if there are any boundaries and borders in mathematics, uh, then clearly uh, Jean is totally unaware of it and transgresses into foreign territory very easily. Uh, he was, of course, awarded the Crawford Prize in Mathematics, together with Terry Tao, for having made important contributions to fields in mathematics in 2012, from number theory to the theory of nonlinear waves. I must say, in some sense, uh, this kind of extraordinary uh, ability to uh, explore and uh, ultimately resolve a variety of such different problems, I think, is another counterexample to another folk theorem. You know, these days you hear a lot about multitasking, and uh, I think scientific research shows that multitaskers are w worse performers than people who are focused, and that's why we all teach our students focus on one problem. And uh, they even are worse in multitasking. Uh, but again, uh, that's, m that theorem se seems not to hold for Jean, who um, and really, I think, has pushed our knowledge so much further. I mean, uh, and I know a favorite metaphor in mathematics is mountain climbing. We're all aware of the massive mountains that lay beyond what we can see. Uh, but now and then, somebody is uh, brave enough. And I think it's this fearsome quality of Jean that um, he just climbs the mountain uh, often single-handedly. Uh, so it's a great honor to uh, you know, reflect and look into the future these, uh, these days of what I think is one of the most prolific, prolific and important mathematician of our generation. Many, many prizes and uh, I'm very happy that uh, yesterday we heard that another prize uh, was given to Jean. Uh, I think it's not yet officially announced. Um, but it was announced that the um, Italian Academy, the Academy de Lencei, that goes back you know, to, the, to what is it, 1609 or something, it's the beginning of the scientific revolution, awarded its most distinguished award, the 2016 Antonio Fretrinelli International Prize to Jean. It's rarely given to mathematicians. In fact, if you look at the list since 1950, it's a good list. I see Hadamar, Lefschitz, Leray, Atia, and in fact our own Freeman Dyson. So I think that already uh, gives an indication of the, the kind of rare universe that uh, Jean is and how incredibly fortunate we are to have this connection, to be with him today and the coming days and kind of celebrate his impact, but I would say entirely in the spirit of Jean's work and work ethic to really concentrate on mathematics uh, these days. I would like to thank again the Institute for uh, being so supportive for, uh, for this kind of event that we have. And uh, also I would like to thank the National Science Foundation for uh, um, granting us um, a nice chunk of money that uh, um, allowed us to bring some of you guys, the young guys in particular, to this event. So I hope you enjoy it and you learn a lot and uh, Lots of tears will come from this event here. The um, chair for the morning session is Alex Rumbold. Here he is. And he's going to present the speakers for this morning. And you will see that uh, we try to cluster the speakers in terms of their fields because, like the director said, Jean really spanned quite a number of fields in mathematics. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy the variety that uh, we organized for you.